Hi, my name is David Bodie for Tuts Plus. And in this video, I wanna show you how I put together this living room keyboard digital piano rig to run Contact in one of my favorite piano sample libraries, all while keeping the costs as low as possible and keeping things as simple as possible. So the whole reason behind this particular project is that I wanted to have a keyboard in my living room. My wife and I are both musicians, we have four kids, and even though I have a nice studio with a smaller keyboard that can run all my sample libraries, I wanted to have something out here in my living room so that my wife can teach piano lessons and we can sing songs with our kids and teach them music and you know have that kind of living room piano feel. But I didn't wanna buy an actual piano. Now sure, buying a piano would have been a much more simple solution to this problem, but I couldn't fit a giant grand piano in here, and also I couldn't afford one, so I'd have to go for an upright piano, but even with an upright piano, there's still gonna be a pretty good cost associated with getting something that's decent sounding. But even if I could find something decent used, it's still gonna be a couple of hundred bucks to get it moved and then possibly tuned back up, so I wanted to find a cost-effective solution to this problem. Luckily for me, my wife has had this old Korg N1 keyboard for many years. She used to be in a band and this was her gigging keyboard. I really like this keyboard for the way that it plays. This is not a weighted keyboard. It actually has hammers in it. They're inverted hammers, so it does have a pretty nice feel. The problem though is that the sounds on this keyboard are pretty terrible. Now, that's probably because this keyboard was made in 1998 and back then it probably was competitive with all the other keyboard and piano sounds that were available. By today's standards, it is pretty terrible. Especially if you've ever heard any of the sample libraries that you can get for a computer, it just doesn't compare. It's not even in the same league. Once you've heard a really big, beautifully recorded piano library, this doesn't even sound like a piano. It sounds kind of like a toy. So to upgrade the sound, I knew I needed a few things to make it happen. For one, I wanted better speakers out here and I wanted kind of a smaller setup. So I wanted to get a powered speaker just to make things as clean as possible. I did some research and I found these Mica PB42X speakers and a ton of really fantastic reviews. So I bought a set, they were about $130. And for $130, I really wasn't expecting a whole lot and I was really pleasantly surprised. These are really nice speakers. They have a built-in Class D amplifier that delivers 15 watts per channel of what they call quote unquote clean sound. And if I ever needed more output from these speakers, I could just upgrade the power supply. They come with an 18 volt two amp power supply, which gives it that 15 watts per channel out of the amplifier. But if I use a 24 volt five amp power supply, the amplifier will output about 50 watts per channel which is a pretty significant bump. But I'm actually pretty pleased with the sound output just the way they came. I also needed a computer and some way to get the MIDI into the computer. So initially I had tried a very simple MIDI to USB dongle, basically MIDI on one side, USB on the other. It was just a cable with a little chip in the middle. That was a complete disaster, it didn't work. There was all kinds of stuck notes and repeated notes and sometimes the sustain pedal wouldn't work and then sometimes it would just be stuck on. So I decided I'll just get a real interface and I didn't need a huge interface with 20 inputs and 20 outputs because I already have a nice interface in my studio. So I wanted to get something simple but I wanted to make sure that it would actually work. So I decided to get this Behringer Euphoria UMC204 HD. It's more than I need but I was fairly certain that this would work. This has two XLR inputs, preamps, phantom power, four outputs, headphone outs, Really all I need this to do is take the MIDI, get it to the computer, and then give me two nice outputs. I also needed a computer to run contact and to run the libraries. And I have several fast computers, but I didn't want to tie up one of my workstation computers to just basically sit out here in my living room and run piano sounds. So I started looking around online. I really didn't want to spend a ton of money. So I looked at really low priced laptops and what I found is that they're all way underpowered for running contact and sample libraries. But when I looked at the refurbished models, I was able to find something that would work pretty well. So I ended up going with this refurbished Dell here that I found for $140. This has an Intel i5 2.4 gigahertz dual core chip and four gigs of RAM, and it has an old 5400 RPM mechanical hard drive. 
those are basically the only components that I needed. A pretty fast CPU, a little bit of memory, and a hard drive large enough to hold a sample library. Now, 5400 RPM drive is not really super fast, but because I'm just loading the samples and I'm not really going to be streaming a whole bunch from the disk, it's going to work out fine. Four gigabytes of RAM is really just on the limit of what I would consider something I could get to run stable for just one library. And because I'm just gonna run one library, I thought I would try it and see if it worked, and it does. So this little $140 laptop works really, really well. So before I decided to go with Contact, I did demo a few other piano products. I tried True Pianos, Piano Tech, and I was familiar with a few other piano products that some of my friends use who are gigging musicians. Most of them use Mainstage in some of the stock piano plugins or some third-party piano plugins with Mainstage. I wasn't really happy with the sound of the pianos on any of those products, especially at lower dynamic levels. What I found is most of those piano products sound pretty good at a loud dynamic, but at a quieter dynamic, it basically sounded like the louder dynamic or even kind of a middle dynamic just turned down to a quieter level. And that doesn't really sound super realistic. So what I really wanted to use was Alicia's Keys, which is one of my favorite piano libraries, but I wasn't sure that I could get it to work right and have low latency in contact with this kind of very simple setup here. So the great thing about Alicia's Keys is that you don't need the full version of Contact to make it work. You can use the Contact Player, which is what I'm using here. So the price is pretty good if you wanna kind of replicate this exact setup. Alicia's Keys is only $100, then you can use the free Contact Player and you're good to go. Now the trick to making it work with low latency and no glitches is adjusting the settings. So when I first installed the drivers for this Behringer Audio MIDI USB interface, it set the sample rate at 96 kilohertz. And although that was very good for the latency because it was very, very low, when I played more than a few notes, it started to glitch out on me. So I had to drop that down to 48 kilohertz. The next thing was kind of balancing the ASIO buffer size, how many samples I would use. You can use a larger sample size and it's very stable, but you have a higher latency. So basically you need to balance stability and latency. And with a little experimentation, I basically started at a low buffer size of, I think, maybe 128 samples. And I worked my way up until I didn't hear any glitches. And at 512 samples, it seems to work just fine and I don't get any glitches. And latency doesn't seem to be a real issue whatsoever. It seems to be very fast and I don't notice any problems or any delay from when I hit the key to when I'm hearing the sound. The next thing I had to work on was getting contact to work properly for this application with this hardware. By default, when I loaded up Alicia's keys into contact, it only loads about 320 or so megabytes into memory. And then all of the rest of the samples that it needs, it has to stream from the disk. Now Alicia's keys has a total sample size of almost seven gigabytes. So with such a small amount loaded into memory, it has to stream from the disk quite a lot. And because this is a slower hard drive, that did not work out so well. When I first started playing, things were okay, but the more notes that I played, the more it had to stream from the disk, and then I started getting some glitching. So what I needed to do was to make contact load more of the samples into memory. And that's pretty simple to do. You can just go up here to the options, and then under memory, there's an option to change the instrument preload buffer size. And by default, this is set to 60 kilobytes, but I can push that up as high as 240 kilobytes. Now, I don't know exactly what those 240 kilobytes are related to, but when I change the preload buffer size and push it up as high as it can go, close it down and reopen contact and load up Alicia's keys, now it loads 1.26 gigabytes into memory. So a lot more of those samples are loaded into memory, which means that it doesn't have to stream as many samples from the disk, which is very good. Now when I play, I don't have any problems with streaming any samples from the disc. If I just mash all the keys and hold down the sustain pedal, so if it works and I don't have any problems playing that many samples, kind of mashing the keys and being an idiot, it'll definitely work when I'm just playing the piano normally. So that makes me feel very confident that this is a solution that will work very well. And it sounds really fantastic. Alicia's Keys is a really great piano library. So that's pretty much it. 
The components are pretty simple. You need a keyboard with MIDI or even USB output. You need some kind of USB to MIDI audio MIDI interface. Some kind of computer that can run the sample libraries or the sample synthesizer that you want to run for your living room setup. I like Contact and Alicia's Keys, but maybe you will like a different sample library. And finally, some decent speakers to make it sound great. That's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Again, my name is David Bodie for Tuts Plus, and I'll see you around.